hey geeks welcome to the c programming boot camp from scratch to advance my name is akash powal and i welcome you all to this power programming boot camp never underestimate the power of i would like to congratulate you all for enrolling in this course have a great journey ahead code never lies comment sometimes to thanks hey good to see you here let's begin this course with introduction to c so what is a programming language it's a medium by which a user can communicate with a computer system so programming language like human language are defined through the use of syntactic and semantic rules and provides a medium to talk to a pc so programming language is being broadly classified into three types that is high level low level and machine level languages so let's talk about them in brief so to get a rough idea about the language that we are learning so first one is low level language it's mostly written in mnemonic codes which is also called as assembly language and which is close to hardware due to which it is fast to learn so second one is machine language it's a type of language which our machine understands and process directly without any transformation so it's mostly written in binary codes it is fast to execute but slow to understand by the programmers the third one is an high level language it's a machine code independent language which is easy to learn but slow to execute the language which we are learning is also known as high level language so let's also understand the pro process of programming how our commands are get executed and processed by the system firstly the commands or instructions which we write is known as source code there is an internal software that is being used to convert the source code into an object code or byte code known as compiler and this byte code is machine executable code and machine process wait accordingly so thanks so what are comments comments are those statements that are ignored by the compiler during execution of our program it helps to make our code more reliable and easy to understand it helps in debugging and analyzing your code a famous quote says by ran campbell commenting your code is like cleaning your bathroom you never want to do it but it really does create a more pleasant experience for you and your guest so syntax to write comments in c there are two types in c first one is single line command and second one is multi line command so how to write a single line command the basic syntax is two forward slashes with your comment it's a main or simple way to write your comment and second one is multi line commands in which you write starting your command by a forward slash with an asterisk mark and a command ended by an asterisk and forward slash thank you In this lecture we will look up for the basic C code which we mostly prefer to use to write our every C program. So first of all let's now create a new file by going to the file new section go to source file. So first we will write stdio.h so it's also known as the linker section. So okay so next one is int main Okay, so here you write your whole C code. Okay, with returning a value, I am going to return a zero value. This is our basic C boilerplate code. Hey, so here we are going to write our first C program. 
so just follow the steps hash include studio dot h and main and zero print f my c program then ended by a semicolon so let's now save it let's now compile it go to compile and run so here is our first c program kudos all done well thanks so in this lecture we are going to learn about data types so before starting to data types let's talk about identifiers so what are identifiers so identifiers are the name given to our program construct by which we can identify a particular object in a given program so for example let me say that name is equal to akash so then here akash is also known as identifier and it's given a value name as akash so it's known as a value and whole name uh, expression is known as a uh, valid expression okay so these are the identifiers so now let's learn about what are the data types so data types are used to tell the compiler what type of value that a variable can hold along with the set of operations that can be performed on that variable so mostly these are being get broadly classified into three types let me write about three types so first one is also known as the primitive data type primitive data type okay now second one is also known as the derived data type and third one also known as the user defined data type okay user defined data type so what do we mean the primitive data types primitive data types also known as the built in data types it mostly consist of uh, the data types like integer float double character i'm sorry character and void so what is the use of integer so integer this type of data type are being used to hold down the integer value float data type is used to store down the float value or known as the floating point number next one is double that is being used to store down the double value or double precision floating values or decimal numbers character these are being used to store a single valid character next one is void that is being used to store null okay null means zero nothing so next one is derived data types derived data types uh, classified into functions and next one is pointers and next one is array okay so next one is user defined data types it mostly consists of a structure union enumeration we will learn about all these in description in coming up lecture series so let's now create a basic program and learn about the data types hash include hstudio.h and main so okay now return zero okay so So first of all, we will create down a character data type. Character is known as the data type. So what is the basic syntax? I am going to write first of all the basic syntax. Syntax to declare. So here it's known as the data type. Da uh, data name is equal to value and ended by a semicolon. It did, uh, the compiler will detect a semicolon and hence confirms it that the statement is being terminated so first of all we will create down a character name as the first that is equal to uh, a single character will end with a a okay so this is a character now we will create down an integer value known as the value that is also called as 10 okay so for def okay printf the character value is percent %c for character data type we are using percent %c okay remember this for character we are using percent %c 
एंड आफ्टर पर्सन सी वी विल गिव अ कॉमा विद द डेटा टाइप नेम दट इज फर्स्ट ओके एंडेड बाय सेमी कॉलर सिमिलरली टू प्रिंट आउट द वैल्यू द इंटीजर वैल्यू इज परसन डी और इंटीजर वी आर यूजिंग परसन डी so here we use value with ended by a semicolon so let's now just save it okay so data type dot c okay so now just go to execute compile and run so let's briefly the character value is a and the integer value is 10 c hey before jumping to a new concept let's create down some names to understand down the basics okay so first of all we are going to create a program uh, that takes two inputs and return their sum okay so in this uh, program we will come to know that how to take input from the user and how it will going to return something so okay so first of all we will going to write down hash studio dot h in main okay so print f we are going to take the two numbers so i will going to ask the user to uh, give me the two numbers input two numbers okay so for taking input we are using scan f the type of data type we are taking input for int d percent d two inputs we are using so 2 percent d with uh, asterisk of variable name asterisk of y so before taking those input we are going to declare both those variables so int is a type of x comma y okay so we also create one variable for taking down the sum with initializing the value as 0 okay so we are we are taking the two numbers now for print f we are using the sum is percentage d and here we going to return out the sum so now here what we write in sum that sum is equal to x plus y and that's all so for new line we are using an escape character that is known as the backslash n for new line okay so just now let's save it sum dot c okay so now just go to execute compile and run enter two numbers so i will write 10 20 the sum is 30 okay so let's create another new program for swapping out the two numbers swapping out the two numbers okay so hash inputs okay. so in main okay so we are taking two variables and x y and one temporary variable okay so print f enter the two numbers scan f percent d percent d address of x address of y okay so after this just we going to print out before swapping the numbers are percent d percent d x comma y okay so we first swapping the numbers are percent d okay we are going to give a new line character also so backslash n so let's zoom it out okay so let's write down the logic for swapping out the two numbers so first of all we are uh, we are going to store value of x in temp variable so the value of x is being get stored into the temp okay so now in x we are going to write down the y and why we are storing on the temp so it's the main logic okay so now let's print out our 
after swapping the values are percent d percent d x comma y okay so now just save it swapping dot c so now go to execute compile and run so enter the two numbers suppose i write 3 and i write 5 so the before swapping the numbers are 3 and 5 and after swapping it will be 5 and 3 what are operators operators are nothing but only the identifiers that are being used to perform the valid operations on the data so we are going to learn about few operators with the help of the programs so so suppose that let's create a new program hash include studio dot hatch and main okay so we are creating now the two variable x comma y so suppose that we are assigning a value x is equal to 10 y is equal to 10 10 okay y is equal to 10 and x is equal to 10 suppose that we want to subtract both and store in the value of x so x is equal to x minus y so this subtraction is known as the operator okay so operators these are also known as the arithmetic operator okay so now the value of x will be after this x will become zero okay suppose that if we want to assign something so x is equal to 10 so is equal to is also known as the assignment operator uh, and suppose that we want to make y is equal to y into 10 so here it is known as a multiplication operator also known as the arithmetic operator and suppose that we want to check out if it is greater than or not so we are using a if condition or conditional statement uh, you will learn in further lectures so if x is greater than y it is known as greater than operator okay so here you can write less than less than is equal to greater than equal to equal to equal to so let's now talk about bitwise operator okay so bitwise operator so what do you mean the bitwise operator suppose that we are assigning a value x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 5 okay so we want to perform the bitwise operations on these both values x and y so how bitwise operator works as it consists of the different type of operators like AND, OR, XOR, NOT, LEFT SHIFT or RIGHT SHIFT so we will look up for all these one by one so okay so first of all how the computer performs this bitwise operation so first this number is being get integer number is being get converted into its binary number so how we can write 10 as a binary okay it's 1010 zero, one, zero okay so how it, you can write it uh, in binary so it is one zero one zero so how can you write five as a binary it can be written as zero okay so to perform an end operation okay so end operation okay and okay symbol to perform the end operation so suppose that uh, we are creating two var variables okay and x y and uh, finally we are restoring this in z so z is equal to x and y okay sorry x and y so how it will perform how computer will perform it so what is x one zero one zero okay so what is y so what is y it is like uh, 0 1 0 1 okay so how <coughs> so as we know, know that to table of 1 what is uh, 0 1 it is 0 okay what is 1 0 it is 0 it is 0 and it is 0 so the output will be like 0 0 0 0 and uh, its equivalent decimal is, is 0 so, okay so let's now see down the result okay so let's now print f percentage d and z okay so let's now run it and let's see so answer is zero as you can see that okay so let's now uh, do one more thing instead of and we are using or operator so, okay so how it will done 
so as we know that uh, it is one zero one zero and it is zero one zero one and performing or operation over it so one zero one it will and one zero one one zero one one zero one so it is one 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 so its equivalent decimal number will be two so its equivalent decimal number will be equal to fifteen okay so let's now print it uh, okay so just now save it and print it so its value is equal to fifty great so we will now perform the left shift operation okay so it's a unary operator left shift 2 so how it will do it since as we all know that x is equal to 1010 if we perform left shift twice it means it's being at left shifted two times equal to if we are using the left shift it is equal to the tan into 2 raised to the power of 2 okay so here it is known as a special formula for determining the left shift okay so let's just leave it out so its value will be equal to the 40 and if we are using the right shift it will divide it by the 4 that is equal to the value of 2 okay so it will divide by the 2 raised to the power of 2 so let's just suppose find out the result its right shift will answer will be 2 because it gives the floor value and if we are using the left shift it will give 40 so just like a chart so it's give the 40 okay so it's all about the bitwise operator so let's talk about a new operator also known as the ternary operator which is the specialty for the C okay so let's talk about the ternary operator okay so okay operator so ternary operator so its symbol is question mark and colon so it's denoted by the question mark and colon it's a conditional operator which is being used to perform a shorthand of if and else so suppose that we are creating down a program hash include hash okay so in main okay and suppose that if we want to find out the which number is greater than or not okay so which number is greater or not so suppose that we are creating we are just uh, declaring three variables a b and c okay so the value we are assigning is a is equal to 5 b is equal to 4 okay suppose that if we want to check whether a is greater or b is greater so suppose that c is equal to a is greater than b so is 5 is greater than 4 condition is true so it is just like we are using question mark and printf a is greater than b if it is so then printf b is greater than a semicolon okay so it's that much easy so okay Terminal dot C. Let's execute this program. Okay, so A is greater than B. C. The output is A is greater than B. Okay, so greater than B. Suppose that if we are exchanging the values, B is equal to forty. Okay, now just run it again. So now B is greater than A. So how this, uh, how the computer will evaluate? Since the A is greater than B this condition is being get checked okay so this condition is being get checked and if the condition is true the the statement after question mark is being get uh, run out or if the condition is being get false then the question mark after the colon is being get executed and hence it's all about the ternary operator hey welcome again so let's now talk about conditionals okay so what are con conditionals so conditionals are nothing but only when we want to execute a special branch of program by uh, passing out a condition okay suppose that uh, uh, if we take a real world example suppose that if you get a greater than 80 marks then only you get a cycle otherwise you will not get so here we are using some conditionals in programming also 
for performing out so let's create a program so that hash include stdi dot h so suppose that <coughs> we are going to create a conditional so let's create a two values int a comma b and we are assigning a value a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 so to create a condition suppose that you want to check if a is greater than b or b is greater than a so we are using if if a is greater than b here if is also known as the conditional okay so if is called the conditional and here it is known as a condition so basic syntax is write down if statement if key if is a keyword and this is known as the condition and if condition is true we will create a curly braces it's the body of the if block and here we will perform some operations so that means a is greater than b okay suppose that if condition is not true then we are using else else means printf percentage d b is greater than a okay so b is greater than a so let's now save it that means conditionals dot c so let's now execute and run it so here b is greater than a because b is equal to 20 so condition will if a statement is being get executed if the condition is being get false then it will move the con uh, then it will move the control to the else statement and it will get executed so it's about if else okay so let's now talk about uh, more special conditionals also known as else if okay so let's take about hash include studio.h int main okay so suppose that if we are assigning int a is equal to 10 okay int b is equal to 20 and uh, int c is equal to 30 okay so suppose that if we want to say that if a is greater than b then perform printf is greater than b okay so it's all about if statement now suppose that if we want to perform some more conditions else if if a is greater than b and if a is also greater than c then print f a is greater than c okay now suppose that again we want to check another condition else if b is greater than a okay and b is greater than c that means printf that means b is the largest one okay and else else c is the largest c is the largest okay so let's now uh, uh, see the flow of the statement we are assigning three values and a equal to 10 b equal to 20 and c is equal to 30 so first if condition is being get executed so it will evaluate a is greater than b that means 10 is greater than 20 the condition is being get false so else if a statement is being get executed so else if means a is greater than c that means 10 is greater than 30 condition is being get false then again it get passed to the else if block so here it will evaluate two conditions b is greater than a and b is greater than c here and is the relational operator that we have already discussed in the operation section operator section so b is greater than a that means 20 is greater than 10 yes condition is true is 20 is greater than 30 condition is false so it get passed to again this one so c is the largest okay so output will be c is the largest so let's now see it control just save the program save the program so else import c so let's now run it so c c is the largest it's all about else if statement so let's now uh, talk about something more uh, nested if else okay so let's talk about nested if else 
suppose that int a b okay so let's say that if a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 okay so let's suppose if a is greater than b okay so a is greater than suppose that uh, if a is less than b means 10 is less than 20 conditions too then it will again check if a is greater than 5 if it is so then print a is great uh, greater than 5 and less than 20 okay so okay so let's now save it and just now run it so a is greater than 5 and less than 20 because a is less than 10 the means condition is being made true so again it will evaluate a is greater than 5 again it will check suppose that here you will write as print of under raised okay so suppose that a value is 1 okay so now under raised it will show under raised that's all about nested ifs and all about conditionals thank you so let's talk about loop so why we need loops so in some situations where we want to repeat certain block of statements while the specified conditions are true then we have to use loops so there are mainly two type of uh, two type of loops there are entry control loop and exit control loops so entry control loops consist of while and for loop whereas exit control loop consists of do while loop so let's talk about them one by one so let's create a new program hash include studio.h and mail okay so suppose that if we want to print number from 1 to 10 so uh, for lemon for lemon way you are just printing out like person d1 okay and you are copy out the whole 10 times okay and just changing out those numbers okay like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 like this okay like 8 9 and 10 so it's a lemon way to uh, repeat certain block of statements to perform the same operations one by one so it's take too much time if we want to print thousands of statements at a single run so for this we are using loops so first of all let's talk about while loop okay so while loop so basic syntax for while loop is syntax for while loop syntax while with a condition okay so while with a condition and after that uh, starting and opening of the curly braces that contains the body of the while loop and here statements okay so if the condition is being made true until the condition is being raised up the statements are being get executed okay so let's take an example suppose that we are creating int i is equal to 0 and we are uh, printing down from number 1 to 10 okay so from number 1 to 10 or okay from number 1 to 10 so i must be less than is equal to 10 this is the condition and we are just printing down a print f percentage d i just we are incrementing the value by 1 okay so if the condition is being and so first of all i is equal to 1 1 is less than equal to 10 so it will print out the value as 1 and increment the value by 1 so the value of i will be 2 and again it will perform the loop till the value is being at raised up to equal to 10 so let's just now save it while.c so let's now print it 
So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's that much easy. So let's give a new line correct. Now it's now printed. Okay. So let's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So let's comment it down. Suppose that the same thing we want to perform with the help of the for loop. So the basic syntax for for loop is use of for keyword. Okay. It consists of three parts. First one is the initialization. Okay, and uh, with semicolon, with colon each initialization. Okay, initialization. It can then the second part is condition, and third part is uh, updation. Okay, so third part consists of the updation. So initialization as we have already initialized i is equal to one. Here you can also initialize or leave it. There is no need for initialization, but semicolon is being get required. So what is the condition? I must be less than equal to ten. And what you are updating? I plus plus. That is normally it is also known as unary increment operator that increases the value by one. And we are just what we have we are printing a printer percentage d backslash n and value of i. Okay. So let's save it and run it again. So it will again print the same. Okay. Suppose that I want to uh, increase value by one and percentage d i plus one. That means two two. We are increasing two three four five is increasing value by one. Okay. So it's the, with the help of for loop. So let's not talk about do while loop. It is also known as the exit control loop. What does it mean? The condition is being get checked after it executes a minimum one number of times the loop condition. So how it will look like? Do okay. Print f percentage. Print f hello. Okay. and i plus plus while i must be less than equal to 10 okay so it will print to like this so hello 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 so I, it's look like a little messy let's change the format okay so now see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 number of times it will got printed now suppose that if we write i is greater than 10 what does this mean that means the condition is being at false for the first time only if we are using normal while loop because i's value is 1 but it will print hello at least one time that's the special behavior of this do while loop so it will print hello one time okay so it's all about while for and do while loops we will see a program in the coming up lecture thank you uh, so let's have some hands on on over loops so we will create down a new program to find out the factorial so how to find out the factorial okay so we will uh, create a program to find out the loop so we will ask the user to enter a number for which we have to find out the factorial and at the number so we are scanning f percentage d and address of n so okay so here we are declaring those number and the factorial will store the result okay so here we are create, uh, starting the loop for i is equal to 1 so i must be less than equal to n and i plus plus and here fact is equal to fact star i okay and at last we are printing down and at last we are printing down the factorial value okay so that is fact okay so factorial is equal to now run the program okay so factor enter the number 5 so it's equal to 120 as we all know that factorial of 5 is 120 thanks for watching uh, so welcome back today we are going to learn about break statement it is a jump statement which is used either in the body of a switch or inside the loop 
when our compiler encounters a break statement at that point loop is being get terminated and control of the execution is being get transferred to out of the nearest and closing loop so let's understand it with the help of a program suppose that i am creating down a variable int i and i am just uh, turning down the loop from i is equal to 0 to i must be less than 10 and i plus plus okay so suppose that i am printing down the values for each iteration okay so when the value of i is being get raised to greater than 5 then my loop will get terminated so for i is equal to 0 it got print out condition is being get false for i equal to 1 it is being get print out for i equal to 2 for i equal to 3 for i equal to 4 and for i equal to 5 for i equal to 6 it is being get breaked out and the loop is being get terminated so from i is equal to 1 0 to 6 it got print out so let's run it see from 0 to 6 it all got print out so it's about the break statement now let's learn about continue statement so what do you mean the continue statement continue statement is nothing but only it is also a jump statement which is being used inside the body of the loop whenever compiler encounters a continue statement the rest of the statement after continue in the body loop are being get skipped and the control of the execution is immediately transferred to the continuation part so let us suppose that if i am using here continue and see and i am using like this for i is uh, this condition is not true okay so for uh, uh, for i equal to all other values it got print out so let's run this program okay so for i is equal to 0 to 5 it got print out and for i is equal to 6 it is being get skipping all those part after the continue statement so it is not getting printed out okay so it's all about break and continue statement which will further help you in solving many different problems thanks for watching hey so let's talk about functions a function is a specific block of code which performs some specific task it get executed only when it is being get called by some other function so it may accept data from the calling function and after processing this data it may or may not return the value so mostly these are of two types first one is the user defined and the second one is the uh, built in okay so for example like uh, you are using printf scanf these all are built in and user defined these all are the functions that are being and uh, uh, made by the programmers like uh, for creating down a factorial function or sum or to get out the sum function of any two number or any three number so these all are the function types so what is the basic def, uh, terminology that we are using for a function it consists of function declaration function definition and function calling so let's talk about them each one by one so first of all let's create a new program hash include studio.h so int main okay suppose that i want to create a function name as sum so it consists so first of all i am going to write down int that is being going to return and me a value after performing the sum so it is known as the return type that is integer okay so let's next i am going to write down the function name after that i am going to write down the parameter types which i am going to pass over it that i am going to pass both integer type parameters so it will perform the sum of both integer type and return down me the value as an integer format so ended by a semicolon it is known as the function declaration okay it is known as the function declaration so the basic uh, criteria that a, a good programmer must follow is that first of all you must declare a function then you must call a function and at last you must define a function so suppose that i am asking a user to print f enter the two numbers okay so suppose that user enters the two number 
address of x and address of y and pass those into the form of x comma y and just printing out printf sum is percentage d comma okay so after returning the value of sum it is being get uh, over placed by this percent test d okay so here we are calling down the function so it is known as the function calling function calling after that we are defining down the function definition function definition and declaration must be of same okay so here we are accepting two parameters int a comma int b here a and b can be replaced by x and y since these are known as the actual argument x and y whereas a and b are known as the formal arguments as there will be no effect in the value of x and y after performing the operation so here it will return a plus b okay so let's save it and type fun dot c okay so let's run this program okay sorry i'm not declaring out those and x comma y okay so enter the two numbers suppose that i enter 10 return t so the sum is 30 okay so it's that much easy how to declare a it is known as the function declaration here we are calling down the function and here it is known as the function definition so let us now create another function known as the factorial okay so just take it down so here suppose that int factorial and it take an parameter only single parameter okay so suppose that factorial is and here we are just taking out only a single integer okay uh, and here we are calling down with by passing one parameter factorial and here just we are making down the function definition int factorial and then okay so here just we create down the logic for factorial int i is equal to 0 comma fact is equal to 1 Okay, int i equal to 1 i must be less than equal to n and i plus plus so here fact is equal to fact star i and return 5 okay so it's all about the factorial function so let's save it and run it so enter the number suppose that i enter 5 okay so okay let's run it. enter the number 5 factorial is 1 dot t okay so it's all about the functions so what is the benefit of writing down this function you can call any number of times this function by passing out only the factorial name we don't need to write this line of code again and again so it helps in reusability it helps in readability it helps in easy debugging if there is any error and it helps in the code modelization so for a good programmer first declare the function call the function and then define the function okay uh, one more thing uh, it's all about the function since as i already told you that it is x okay so it is known as the actual argument and it is known as the formal argument suppose that here i am changing this print f percentage d n okay and here i am writing n is equal to 4 okay and here after i am printing down x so here there will be the no change in the value of x since here it will print out 4 factorial of 4 is being get printed out here and value of x will be as same as will pass out so let's say i have passed down 5 so 4 is the value of n factorial is 24 of because of 4 and 5 is the value of x so there will be no change in the actual and formal arguments since it will just passing down a copy to this n variable 
okay that's all about the functions hope you like it thanks for watching today we are going to learn about the arrays so what do you mean by an array an array is a homogeneous data structure in which same type of elements are being at stored in a sequential memory location so suppose that if you want to store a record of 1000 students linearly then instead of declaring a integer variable to each student we are declaring an array so that we can store the marks of all those students so let's create a program so let's start hash include studio.h int main and here we are declaring an array for the declaration so the syntax will be the, the uh, return type of the array or means the type of the array data type then the array name and the size of the array suppose that I am declaring the array size be the 10 okay so it is also known as the array declaration okay array declaration next thing how to access this array to access this array since it is a sequential memory location so its index is starting from the 0 to this size minus 1 indexing so to access the key value of an array we are using the index so for example let us suppose that uh, printf enter the marks of 10 students okay so I am asking the users to enter the mark of 4 students I am declaring a val value I am uh, creating a loop for i is equal to 0 to i must be less than 10 and i plus plus and I am scanning f those values percentage g and uh, address of ai okay since uh, my index is starting from zero so i am just uh, printing out the loop okay so i am also creating down one variable sum is equal to zero and after scanning i am just uh, putting down the value to the sum variable so sum plus is equal to a of i okay so we are finding down the value of the sum of those student marks so okay so now i'm suppose that i just want to get the marks of the first student so printf the marks of first student is percentage d and a of zero. so marks of first student will be a0 okay so let's save this program suppose that marks dot c okay so let's execute this program compile and execute suppose that uh, let yeah. so suppose that enter the marks of a student i am entering 25 35 45 65 55 75 85 95 15 XO. okay so the marks of first student is 25 as we have entered the marks of first student is 25 suppose that i have to find out the sum of all the marks so since the sum variable is already storing the marks of all student it can also be uh, rewritten as sum is equal to sum plus a of i okay so both are same so print f percentage d so sum of total marks sum of total marks is equal to percentage d and here is sum okay so let's uh, make comment of it save it and execute the program okay so suppose that enter the mass of 10 student i am uh, 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 okay so the sum of total marks is 550 this will be the sum of all those marks okay that's all about the arrays since that's all about the single dimensional array now you can also declare array of multi-dimensional array okay so multi-dimensional array what are multi-dimensional array these are the 2d's array that are being used to store down the matrix so suppose that for declaration i am uh, telling about the syntax so first of all declaring the data type of the array then the array name then the array size of both the first denotes the number of rows and second denotes the number of column and to access it uh, we are using the same index wise and these are mostly used to perform the some of the 2d arrays uh, in this you can perform a matrix multiplication or matrix addition okay so this is out of scope topic you can perform the uh, you can consider it as your task to perform these operations and if you have any doubt just comment down your 
queries in the comment section okay so next this is about 2d array so you can also create a 3d array or multi-dimensional array according to your needs and that's all about the array since it is a homogeneous mixture of sequence of elements okay so it's in it's mostly a index based memory location in which you can access the key from by using the help of the index <coughs> and uh, you can uh, uh, traverse it with the help of a loop that's all about the array thank you okay, so let's learn about pointers so what do you mean by pointers pointer it is a special type of variable which can hold the address of some other variable of its specified type so there is a special pointer called the void pointer that can hold the address of any type of variable so what do you mean a pointer uh, from the dictionary meaning it means it is pointing to some location so suppose that uh, with the help of program you will easy to understand so hash include hstudio.h okay so int main okay suppose that i am creating down a variable of type integer x so suppose that x contain a value 10 now i am creating an pointer type int star ptr okay so it is a pointer of type integer okay so what does ptr holds ptr holds the address of some value of a specified type means integer pointer can hold only the address of integer type of variable okay so ptr is equal to address x so it is also known as declaration of pointer okay it is also known as the declaration of declaration of pointer so what does this means it is means assigning the value of to the pointer now how to dereference a pointer dereferencing a pointer so how to dereference a pointer suppose that i am want to get the value of x with the help of pointer so suppose that printf percent d and if i write a strict of ptr this asterisk means the dereferencing here asterisk means different thing whether here asterisk means dereferencing okay so uh, let's run this program okay so suppose that okay see here you get the value 10 because it is being at dereferencing to the pointer of value x now since the pointers are being at broadly classified into four types four types of pointer are there so first one is null pointer void pointer pointer to pointer and uh, last one is the wild pointer so we will look to each and every one one by one okay so let's comment out this so suppose that let's learn about null pointer okay so null pointer what is doing as a null pointer null pointer is nothing but only it is a special type of pointer which points to such a location where no data is being get stored suppose that i am just declaring out a pointer int p that is equal to null okay so int star p is equal to null that means it is pointing to nowhere so it is also known as the null pointer next one is what do you mean by the wild pointer wild pointer is nothing but only it's a pointer that points to such a location where no value is being get assigned suppose that i am just point i am just creating on a pointer int star q okay and i just dereference it i am not assigned any address to this location so star q okay and if i run this it will give me a garbage value see uh, it's it's printing nothing that means it's giving me garbage value if there will be something then it will print out something so it is giving me the garbage value every time okay it is also known as the wild pointer so next thing about what do you mean the uh, wild pointer so wild pointer it is a special type of pointer which can hold the address of any type of uh, variable okay suppose that i am creating a pointer in the star ptr1 okay since as we have already created down a pointer int star x variable 
so suppose that i am holding down the address ptr1 is equal to address of x and i want to dereference it for dereferencing you must know about the this type of data it is holding so for dereferencing just down printf percentage d value of ptr1 but it will show error because it is a void type of printf you must type cast it okay so int star it will type cast into it so just save it and okay so see here you will get the value 10 okay so so next one is pointer to pointer okay so what do we have the pointer to pointer type pointer type so suppose that i am just creating down a variable x is equal to, uh, suppose that i am p is equal to 10 okay and i am creating down a new pointer int star s and i am creating a double pointer star r okay so suppose that i am holding s is equal to address of p and r is known as the double pointer and it will hold the address of pointer type of variable so it will hold the address of s and to dereference it we are using printf percentage d with the help of s you can get the value of p by using double pointer double pointer of value of r okay so let's run now let's run it here you will get the value 10 okay so let's now change the value 110 and just see out there okay so here you will get 110 okay so this all about the pointers so let's learn about some advanced c topics okay so let's begin with structure or known as the user defined data types so first of all let's consider a scenario suppose that if we want to store a record of some students with the fields containing the name of a student the marks of a student and the roll number of the student since it's quite difficult to arrange down the different data types of us at a single time of so many students so we are using a user defined data types that is known as the structure with the help of this we can group together different type of data fields or members under a single name okay so how to define a structure we will learn here so first of all to define a structure we are using a keyword that is named as the struct so struct is a keyword that is being used to define a structure then the structure name that is student okay then followed by a semicolon at the end don't forget to put the semicolon okay then the field or members name suppose that i am taking down int roll number okay so we cannot initialize the value accepts the pointer variable okay so here we are taking down the variable and next suppose that you want to store the marks and last one is the for storing down the name of size 25 okay so it's a character array of size 25 so it is known as the declaration of a student variable so how to allocate a memory so to allocate a memory dynamically we are using some of the special functions or dynamic memory allocation so we will using here malloc malloc it is a dynamically allocated memory criteria by which we can allocate a memory dynamically during the runtime so suppose that i am creating down a struct student type pointer ptr okay and ptr is equal to struct student star malloc size of struct student okay so here we are creating down a pointer and here we are locating down with the help of a malloc malloc this is, is being used to allocate the memory of the size of struct student means the total size of integer of 4 bytes marks of 4 bytes and character bit of 25 bits okay so it depends upon the different type of compilers okay so here it will allocate a memory and suppose that if i want initializing the values so ptr of arrow roll number that is equal to 25 and ptr of 
marks is equal to 100 okay so let's print out those marks okay print out percentage d ptr of marks okay so let's save it and run this so it will give you 100 okay so it's about the structure so let's learn about union it's also a user defined data type in which we can group together different type of members under a single name the only difference between the structure and union is in case of a structure each member is allocated its separate memory while in case of union a single memory is allocated that will be shared by the member at one time okay since the size of union will be equal to the size of the longest member present inside the union so union cannot be initialized whole at once okay so suppose that how to find out the difference between structure and union you can also declare union as same as a structure so first of all i just want to going to show you the total size of the structure okay so print f percentage d and size of struct student okay so let's now print it union.c so here it will give you that 36 okay now suppose that i am creating down same st structure with the help of a union so instead of a structure we will use union okay same as a structure and union and uh, i am taking down union uh, just need to change down the name as there is an issue in name okay so let's now run it see its total size is 28 okay, so the maximum size here is the character array of 25 bits so here 25 bits but as we all know that the memory is being allocated according to your compiler so it is a 64 bit so four uh, in 4 4 bit it is being assigned so here 25 5 instead of 25 it will assign a one extra memory space that is known as a 28 so 28 is being printed out okay suppose that i am giving here 30 so it will give you the 32 okay see here you will getting out the 32 so the main difference between structure and union is you can uh, here separate memory allocation is there but here the uh, allocation will be of the maximum size so only one variable can be assigned at a time so here you cannot uh, suppose that if I just want student okay suppose that I just want to create down one union as s okay and I just want to initialize one variable s dot roll number okay s dot roll number is equal to 10 and I just got print f percentage d and s dot roll number okay s dot roll number now since the memory is being allocated to your roll number and it is being assigned but now suppose that if s dot marks is equal to 100 and i again print f percentage d i just want to get up again the roll number so here so let's get student one okay so so see okay let's give some space percent 10 and just commenting it out okay so see here you are getting 10 and here you are getting 100 why you are not getting 10 here after because we are accessing this roll number since it is being at overwritten each and every time okay so here marks is being at updated to the roll number because the memory is being locate, allocated to a single variable at once it's the main difference between the structure and union that's all welcome back so what do you mean a file a file is a collection of records which is stored permanently in any secondary storage device such as hard disk so today we are going to learn about file handling so how it works it mainly consists of four different steps first declaring a file pointer then opening the file process the file and close the file okay so let's learn about how to declare a file pointer so to declare a file pointer okay so declaring a file pointer so it includes a file data type it is, it is a structure which includes all the necessary functions to perform 
different type of operations of opening or closing or processing a file okay so you have to write capitalized file with the asterisk mark of a pointer type okay so fp is a file pointer okay so here it can be any name okay so after declaring a file pointer how to open a file so open a file so fp is equal to f open it consists of the file name suppose that uh, my file name is my file dot txt okay and i just want to open it in read mode so here you write your destination file name and here you will write down the mode so here r means reading mode you can also use write mode you can also use append mode here you can also use binary mode also but for suppose that i am reading this so before reading let me show you what is, is inside my file so just go open to your current directory where this program is being stored so let, i'm going of my all my program so here it is my file so here it is hi this is akash here it is written so we will just process it here okay so we are going to write it here fp equal to f open my file dot txt read mode so here we are declaring one character character ch and we are using a loop while ch is equal to f get c f get c is nothing but only a function that is being used to get down the character from the file pointer is not equal to end of file till the last of the file just we are going to printing down each character okay so here's ch let's save this program and execute see here hi this is akash as you can see it here okay so this is the way how you can read from any file now let's learn about how to write to any file okay so let me comment out all this okay so just uh, as you've already declared one file pointer so let's open the file again with my file dot txt and we are using writing mode since the writing mode enables a user to write to a file by overwriting the content okay so here we are writing a new content here okay so let us suppose that uh, i just want to write while a condition is always true and here we will scan it scan up the character in address ch and here we will put c f put c here we are using a function f put c that will insert f put c in the file pointer fp okay and after inserting it will search okay so after scanning if character value is new line then i just want to break the loop okay so here we will insert a new line to our file okay so after opening the file now let's close the file for closing the file we are using a function known as f close with passing down the parameter as file pointer name okay uh, here we will write down the file so just now let's now write the character character ch okay so let's now run the program okay so hey geeks welcome to c programming enter okay so we have successfully written over it to see whether it has already been written or not let's get back to our file so see here hey geeks welcome to c programming as the content is being get overwritten it's about how to write a file so with the help of f get c you can read and with the help of f put c you can write over the file it's about the basic file handling thanks for watching hey programmers i want to congratulate you all on completing my course you have worked very hard over the past few days well done if you ever had any questions don't hesitate to reach out thanks again i look forward to possibly collaborating again someday as gratitude is the attitude that
takes you to your altitude.